just now. But I think it's really important to emphasize the importance of the Battle of Vimy Ridge in, nation, in Canada becoming a nation. And as you heard, Vimy Ridge was a key position in northern France, as it was a linchpin in the Germans' Hindenburg Line along the Western Front, from Flanders to the English Channel. If Vimy fell, it would expose the German territory behind the ridge to the Allies. As important as it was for the Allies to get the ridge, it was even more important for the Germans not to lose it. And as you've also heard now, the, ridge, the, the Battle of Vimy Ridge, which began at 5.30 a.m. on Easter Monday, April 9, 1917, a day like today, was the first time that all four Canadian divisions had fought together on the same field. The day dawned cold and snowy, the men had been waiting up all night to begin their Vimy Glide, a tightly choreographed artillery assault up the ridge. By 6.15, a mere 45 minutes later, the Canadians had made it through the first line of trenches. By mid-afternoon, they had taken command of the crest of the ridge. The Canadians had accomplished in one day what the British and French had not been able to do in two and a half years. Why did the Canadians succeed where the British and French had failed in taking this ridge? The Canadian Corps was an undeniably an outstanding fighting force. And there were many factors which contributed to its effectiveness, as you also have just heard. Canada's army was made of largely sturdy young men, from what was a primarily rural society. Many of the soldiers from the frontline troops up to the senior commanders demonstrated a willingness to innovate and experiment with new equipment and tactics which involved thorough preparation and lower rank participation. The soldiers left a legacy even larger than the victory. They left a legacy of Canadian qualities that permeate our democratic and open society to this day. From the victory, the world started to take notice. For example, even before this battle, a captured German headquarters document read, the Canadians are known to be good troops and are therefore well suited for assault. There are no deserters to be found amongst the Canadians. And afterwards, one historian was moved to remark that the Battle of Vimy Ridge was perhaps the most brilliant success of the war on the British front. But this victory came at a price. 3,598 soldiers lost their lives out of more than 10,000 casualties. The price was high, but the significance of this victory in Canada's march towards nationhood was clear. The Canadians were brave and strong and were earning their independence. Corporal Roy L. Stevens, 26th New Brunswick Regiment, who was writing to his mother on June 7, 1917 after she inquired about two neighbors who were killed at Vimy, said, Dear Mother, you asked me in a letter of April 27th if I had seen Lee Crandallmeyer or Herb Bradley before they were killed. Yes, I was talking to them about a week before, and I tried to make them see the best side of it, which I think they did, for every new fellow seems to think that the war will soon end when they get there. If you ever see or talk with any of their people, just tell them that was the best place for them to give up their lives. Also, that it was in one of the most important battles of the war, where the Canadians upheld their great name, which would make any troop look up to them, with Bus Love Roy. But now, 95 years later, with the last surviving World War I Canadian soldier gone, who will remember the sacrifices that day that started Canada on the road to nationhood? Certainly the families of these soldiers have their memories and keep them safely guarded in their homes. But strong societies are built on the collective memories of their past. Telling these stories as a nation is the greatest honor we can bestow on these soldiers and their descendants. To do this, we must reach out to our youth. They have the strength in their arms to carry the torch which they have been passed, the impressionable minds to learn of the importance of these stories, and they have the open hearts to keep these memories true. As generations pass, we must never forget how Canada became a nation and take to heart the pledge, we will never, remember, we will, we will never forget them. War II veterans, Mr. Sam Garnett, and ask him to come forward. Fortunately, uh, we only suffered through one kind of war, like Vimy Ridge. And all the statistics that you've heard, I'm going to have to repeat. I didn't know this was going to happen. In any case, when Great Britain declared war against Germany in 1914, and Canada was part of the British Empire at that time, we in turn 
were automatically at war. Canada's population at the time was about 7 million people. On the morning of April the 9th, 1917, over 100,000 Canadians tried to accomplish what the British and the French troops had attempted between 1914 and 1916, which had, however, resulted in over 130,000 Allied casualties. During the spring and summer of 1950, the French Army had tried to take the ridge with a loss of 40,000 men. The British had 100,000 casualties in attempting to seize the ridge from the Germans. The four-day Canadian assault added 10,000 casualties. Over 200,000 men, French, British, Canadian, and German, lay in what was called the Graveyard of France. To honor the Canadian and Allied victory at Vimy Ridge, some 11,285 names were carved into the walls of the Vimy Memorial. To the valor of their countrymen in the Great War and in the memory of their 60,000 dead, this monument was raised by the people of Canada. As well, four Canadians were honored and awarded the Victoria Cross. It has often been said that Canada's sons left their home as young colonials but returned as Canadians. Brigadier General A.E. Ross stated, in those few minutes I witnessed the birth of a nation it certainly appears that the Canadian military experience at Vimy left a positive legacy for the future of our country and future conflicts. Canada entered the Second World War in 1939 with a population of just 12 million. Over 1 million men and women volunteered as there was no conscription until near, near the end of the war. Again, the Canadian Navy, Army, and Air Force were up to the challenge. Among the many special campaigns and successes like Vimy was the liberation of the Netherlands, which has been celebrated for many years by the Dutch, thanking and honoring Canadian servicemen. During the war, servicemen overseas wore shoulder flashes on their uniforms with the word Canada, which made us all be, feel very, very proud. It also turned out to be an invitation for receiving many, many thank yous, as well as requests for kisses on the cheek from beautiful little old ladies. I fear I surrendered at least twice that I can remember. Thank you very much. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. But the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Please rise for the last post, followed by one mo moment of silence.
Thank <laughs> you.